Hello and welcome back to our next episode of Let's Talk Version. We here are joined by Dan. How are you, Dan? Life is wonderful as always. Trying our very best to uh, keep things afloat in business and in life. Amazing, amazing. That sounds uh, that sounds good to hear. So today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, how to survive and thrive in uh, tough economical situations. So, for example, right now we are heading. Right now we are in economic prosperity overall in the world, uh, in the world worldwide. But then we all know that you know there are some uh, political climates that are shifting things with tariffs, uh, tariffs of the United States, and there are you know worldwide uh, concerns about all this that um, might well be that we are fine right now. But then, what will be the near future? Meaning, like a few months to a year or two, maybe perhaps as soon as that. So the question for you is then, how do you see uh, this? Do you see this as a problem? Do you are you concerned about this? What do you think of the whole um, whole situation here? Well, right, let's be honest. Right now, a lot of people are just concerned about the fact that now, because of Donald Trump, things are changing dramatically, especially in global trade. And I quite frankly agree with them because global business and international business have somehow changed a lot over the past few months. Uh, because of a lot of shifts in America's foreign policy and how it affects uh, various tariffs and various forms of international commerce. Now, with, with that being said, uh, there's nothing new here for me personally, because we've seen all of this before in previous administrations as well. So I really believe in the fact that all businesses are cyclical in that we move from one cycle to the other and things get better and worse. And when things are going well, we have to prepare for the next hit, which will probably take things down. And when things are going down, we should not be pessimistic. So quite frankly, am I concerned? The answer is absolutely not, because uh, this is not something that I've seen for the first time. And this is not some, something that I will see for the last time. This will happen again and again. Business is very cyclical. However, of course, this uh, should be uh, somehow a wake up call for those of us who might not have been prepared for the current uh, business climate and economic situation around the world. So if you are not ready for it, then, of course, you will suffer. And that is why I believe that you should not be concerned. But at the same time, you've got to make plans. You've got to have plan Bs and whatnot. You've got to know what you're doing. Uh, otherwise, you will, of course, suffer. Uh, good good point you brought up. Before we delve into to, into details of what you, uh, what it is that you do for planning and advice and all that, uh, my point is, okay, what do you mean by plan in general? So, like, is it something different than people do uh, in their day-to-day -day life? Or uh, what is this plan that you're talking about in a very generic sense? Well, see, by plan, I'm mainly referring to two things. Number one, planning your personal finances. And number two, planning your business operations. Now, this is, of course, specifically about those who are uh, self-employed. Uh, so if you're, let's say, for example, working for a company and you have a specific salary and whatnot, then you might not necessarily have to change your working strategy very much because that's pretty much done by your bosses and stuff. So they do change their policies and whatnot. But ultimately, from my perspective, what we have to consider now is how can we do something about this and what we can do about this? Very nice. Very nice. Uh, that, that sounds uh, clarifying. So let's move on to, you know, mentioning, OK, so first of all, uh, we're at the point that we can prepare for survival, meaning that we can prepare for situations that help us. Um, uh, maintain the the low eras that may come, may not, never know. But uh, there are there there is going to be turmoil, maybe not in the near future, in the long future. Eventually, it will be. I agree with you. Uh, these things tend to be sinusoidal, so they go up and come back down, and it happens uh, one way or the other. So that that's completely uh, completely logical to be a, be basically looking out for it. So whether it's uh, in the near future or long uh, long term, doesn't matter. We can still prepare ourselves. So my question for you is, how do you pre prepare yourself as an entrepreneur for survival? And how do you advise people who are not entrepreneurs for their survivals? Very well. So first of all, you are already mentioned, uh, you already mentioned about this matter, how to prepare yourself. It all comes down to planning as well as psychological preparation. You see, the biggest challenge with economic downturns is not that something inherently changes in the economy. Most of the problem is usually psychological, and this happens across the board. For example, let's think about entrepreneurs. So when there's bad economy, most entrepreneurs literally, uh, they t somehow take initiative far 
below what the economy has to offer and assume, you know what, dude, like right now there's no money. No one's going to buy. So the biggest problem and challenge facing entrepreneurs in tough economic conditions is that they actually lose their motivation. And instead of working harder to maintain their quotas, they actually give up on them completely. And that's the biggest challenge and the biggest problem that face all our entrepreneurs, because what they come up with, that, that excuse that they have is quite logical. They're saying, dude, it's a bad economy. People don't have money. But here's the darn truth. No matter how bad the economy is, there are people out there who are willing to buy your product or service because that very economic condition makes them want to do business with you and exactly you. So I have this policy that I say, no matter what happens to the economy, my quotas will have to go up by 10% every quarter. I don't mm -hmm. care what's the economy like. I don't care what's going to happen. My quota is 10% up every quarter. And I will then do whatever I can to reach that goal. So think about, for example, you're running your business and the economy is just really down. So I, instead of, for example, making 10 phone calls to get a client, I make 25 phone calls or 30 phone calls. So we've already talked about this whole 10x mindset where you try to uh, increase the amount of effort you do well. Uh, somehow simultaneously trying to increase your standards. Well, that's exactly what we do. And Grant Cardone, uh, when he first uh, wrote his first book, which was if you're not if you're not selling, uh, sell or be sold. I remember the book right now, sell or be sold. And he literally he self published this book in the worst economic condition in the U.S. in the year 2007. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually t told people how to sell more in bad economic conditions. So understand this. A great belief system to have for most entrepreneurs is this. No matter how bad the economy gets, ultimately, my success depends more on me and my efforts and my product and service than it is about the economy. And ultimately, uh, here's a shocking truth that I realized recently is that it doesn't matter what's happened to the economy. You always get what you expect to get, not what the economy tells you to get. So if the economy is down and you let that determine how you feel about yourself, let that determine your uh, beliefs about what's possible, then of course, of course, you will not make as much money. However, if you work with the belief system that says, no matter what happens to the economy, I will always make exactly what I expect to get, no more and no less, then in that condition, everything changes. You somehow find that you're working harder and you're putting more hours to make the same amount of money the same in, in a difficult economy, and in the end, you reach your goals. So Number one, understand that you've got to have that belief system. So that preparation is predominantly first about your belief system. Are you prepared for it? What do you think an economic downturn means? If you believe that an economic downturn means fewer customers and less money being uh, recycled in the economy, then of course, that's exactly what's going to happen. What? You simply stop making phone calls. You say, what's the point? Dude? Nobody's got money. Why should I make phone calls? Why should I go on business meetings? Why should I do this and that? So that's... The cause here, the real cause here is your loss of motivation, which will then prevent you from actually going on sales meetings and trying to sell your product or promote your ideas and whatnot. And in that condition, the cause meets the effect. And the effect is what? If you do less work, you get less results, right? Very simple. That's exactly what happens to most entrepreneurs. So here's my advice to all the entrepreneurs. When things are going down in the economy, you do, not only you should not reduce your quota increase your quota right that's what i do actually like in tough economic times i actually increase my quotas more unrealistically than i do in good times because that will then give you the right belief system you say dude thank things are tough let's meet the quota no matter what and ironically once you do that there's a huge tremendous opportunity for entrepreneurs in bad economic conditions can you guess what it is well because like competition becomes less. Exactly, man. You're so smart. I love it. That's <laughs> Thank you. exactly what happens because most entrepreneurs assume very logically they're, they're, they're quite right in that they're thinking very logically there's less money in the market. People are not buying anymore because they have to spend their money on more critical things and because the economy is down, the currency is down, all those things. So in that condition, most entrepreneurs actually are less active. What does that mean? Ultimately, all clients have a certain amount of money. Let's say they work in their job and they have a specific amount of income. Now, this money that they have, in most cases, will be spent on products, goods, and services that are offered in the marketplace. And in that case, 
it, what happens if most of these entrepreneurs are not calling, are not selling their products? Well, there is an excess money in the hands of the customers. And therefore, here's the darn truth. In tough economic times, entrepreneurs who work harder will actually make more money than in good economic times. Because now, all of a sudden, all these competition is gone. So people are not uh, spending their money on more products because most entrepreneurs have cut back on their marketing and advertising and whatever. So people will then spend their money more willingly on the products and services that are being offered to them by those few entrepreneurs, companies, organizations, and corporations that are still active in the market. Right. Which means you actually now have access to more clients with more money. And that will actually allow you to generate a better bigger profits during bad economic times. It's just, it baffles my mind. It's sort of really incredible, but it is true. That's very true. And uh, I think that's a very good era to basically, you know, uh, prove yourself and establish your brand because, well, there's, there's less there's less brands out there to be to be heard of. So people come to you and then you can keep them when the ec economy uh, starts to take off. And uh, that's to exactly right. It's for sure. so, uh, we actually, if you remember, we once talked about the, uh, the book Obstacle is the Way. Right, and right. we talked about uh, Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. You see, that's exactly how Rockefeller made his fortune. That's very he, true. He literally decided to stick with this whole oil business thing when everybody was leaving, and he kept this thing. And once the economy got back to normal, which always will, no matter what happens to the you know to the world, to the planet Earth, whatever, no matter what happens, because economies are man-made. They are not na natural in nature. They are man-made. And because they are man-made, they are cyclical in nature. So once the economy got back on track, this guy became a billionaire, just like that. So ultimately, this is about that long-term perspective, plus doubling your effort. Let's be honest. In tough times, you got to make more phone calls. you got to have more sales presentations. Even perhaps have to increase your marketing and advertising budget. But ultimately, it in the end, it works out pretty well. Yeah, you might have to prioritize and push the force, uh, push push all of your resources somewhere that matters the most, and you have to because you have limited resources now. That's true, and I'm paraphrasing you, so tell me if I'm wrong. But then, I, what I got out of your your few few minutes of talks right now is that eventually, yes, economic turmoil makes it harder to to maybe get the clients or get the results that you want to get. But then. If if in in very prosperous times you would have to take make phone, ten phone calls now you may have to take twenty a hundred I don't know what more but it's not impossible it's still very much possible you just have to uh, uptake the the effort you have to make it make it it, it will become difficult more difficult but it's it's, it's very course. much within yeah it's very much within the and as you mentioned we we keep coming back to this episode about the obstacles the way because well obstacle is the way. And exactly. if you treat this as an obstacle, it actually can turn into opportunity, as we discussed in that episode. Um, you just have to, you know, have have more effort behind behind you than easier times. So it's more difficult, but it is very much within the realms of possibility. And uh, and uh, you have you have uh, and because it's hard, a lot of people give up, and you get the edge uh, well, well, by just staying in the game. I I don't think it's just because of the difficulty that people mo uh, people oftentimes give up, especially entrepreneurs, because most entrepreneurs are well-trained and they have been through the ups and downs of business. I think the number one reason why most, especially entre among entrepreneurs, they, uh, gave, they give up during tough economic times is not because they are not willing to work harder. It is right. because they don't believe that it's going to work. Yep. Because often they don't have the experience, because most entrepreneurs, let's be honest, they say most businesses will go out of business in less than one year. That's, right. that's, that's huge. The majority, like 85% of the business or even 90%. So most entrepreneurs are one-time entrepreneurs, which means they have never experienced surviving one business or economic uh, turmoil, which right. means that as soon as things go down, the first thing is, and of course you're right, logically speaking, dude, we tried our best, the economy is down, let's try somewhere else, okay? Or they try to immigrate or they try to do something else. But ultimately, in the end, what they do is, they give up because they don't believe that this economy at some point will get better. And of course, when they believe in that, then that will happen to them to the, in their lives and in their businesses. And that is why most businesses will ultimately suffer in tough economic times. They do not prosper. But there are companies who do. And again, we go back to this book, Obstacles the Way, uh, right. where it was mentioned that great companies, are they thrive in bad economic times. Not only yeah. they do not survive, they actually thrive. They literally 
double their profit. They double their presence in the media. They literally, after this, uh, you know, crisis is over, they are literally taking over that goddamn, you know, sector they're working in and all that stuff. So generally speaking, that's very, very important, especially for entrepreneurs to know that these tough times are temporary and at some point they will get better. But if they do not persist, if they do not increase and redouble their effort, of course, nothing will happen. Okay, so so that sounds very good and uh, v- very true. But we have covered mainly thus far the idea of entrepreneurs and how they can deal with it. I know there are similarities, of course, but the, my point is, okay, what if I'm not an entrepreneur? I'm just an employee and I just got laid off. I don't have a job anymore. I'm I'm having the toughest time. This is like this is really true for a non-entrepreneur. It's going to be really. T- it's not going to be impossible again, but it's going to be really tough or tougher to to you know get a good job now that I don't have a job anymore. What do I do? Uh, do I have to start? Do I have to start? Uh, you know, putting money away. Uh, you know, in saving. And if I, if I do that, how do I save it? All that good stuff. Very good. You know, you, you mentioned what if I just got laid off. Trust me, the people who are hurt the most in bad economic times, they are neither the entrepreneurs nor the ones who got laid off. Can you guess who they are, the people who get hurt the most? No clue. (laughs) The ones who keep their job at the same salary they had before. These are the ones who are hurt the most. Because if you get laid off in a bad economic time, that's oftentimes a great thing because now you are pushed out of your comfort zone and you probably have no choice but to either find a new job Try your entrepreneurial idea because now you have nothing to lose. And I understand right. when you have nothing to lose, you have everything to gain. So the biggest victims in tough economic times are neither entrepreneurs nor those who lose their jobs. It's actually those who are working at jobs with a specific salary. These are the ones who got who get hurt the most, number one. And number two, for these two types of people who are actually currently in this economic condition, uh, I have basically uh, one idea, and that's how can you manage your personal finances? Because going through tough economic times should not be that tough if you know and understand and grasp the very concept of uh, personal finance. How can you manage your savings? How can you manage your uh, basically income that you currently have right now if you're working? And of course, if you don't have a job, then how can you look for other opportunities? So let's first start off with those who currently do have their jobs and their income is pretty much the same, but the economy is just not good enough. So right. in that condition, uh, we have to look at, uh, we have, because in finance, we have two major strategies. We have aggressive strategies and we have cautious strategies. Also in investments, you can actually try to invest very aggressively or you can uh, invest uh, using, you know, in a very secure manner. So in tough economic times, obviously the best approach is to be more conservative with your money. So ultimately for these people, the best approach is to try to reduce their costs and uh, get rid of the non-essential products or services they have to purchase on a regular basis. And it's pretty difficult, let's be honest, because once you have been used to a lot of good things in your life, now you've got to cut, cut back and start right. to uh, budget things. This will be tough. But ultimately, in tough economic conditions for non-entrepreneurs, which is, by the way, why I never want to have a job with a salary, is that <laughs> unfortunately for them, there is no choice but to find ways to cut back on expenses while simultaneously trying to keep their money in assets that grow on a secure manner. So when things are tough, and if you have so much cash in the bank, then you're not supposed to invest it in some risky ventures or some stocks that uh, are uh, somehow risky. You want to be very conservative with your money. You want to invest it in bonds with uh, rates that allow you to actually generate uh, a sustainable amount of income if you happen to lose your job. Now, right. sometimes uh, the economy is so bad where the inflation is just get, get, takes over I just over was everything. gonna go after that. Okay, you're talking That's about right. it. Well, yeah. in that condition, therefore, relying on safe bets ultimately will not yield. So that's another reason why I love international business because in that condition, you have only two options. You can either convert and exchange your money to a foreign currency that allows you to stabilize your value and not lose anything, or you can actually start investing in, uh, if you have big capital, in real estate, which can help you a lot in terms of keeping up with the inflation rate in tough times. Now, if you do not have that kind of budget where, where it allows you to, let's say, buy a small apartment or something with your savings, then in that condition, of course, you have to think of other things, things such as commodities, such as gold or silver or whatnot, that will allow you to keep the value of your money without losing it so much. However, I told you earlier, I am not a fan 
of constantly changing my financial strategy because I really believe, as uh, Warren Buffett says, you're not supposed to watch the market closely. Right. Now, do I uh, never look at the market? Of course not. Of course, I do it all the time. Recently, we made a decision to actually, because uh, we're working in Russia right now and uh, the currency is currently being hit because of some new sanctions that have been imposed against the country. So the value of ruble is dropping. And so we tend to actually move our savings to euro in that country to make sure that we do not lose a lot of value. So you want to be aware of not losing your money by converting it to some solid currencies like euros and US dollars and whatnot. That can be a short term solution. But ultimately, if you're always playing defensively, then let's be honest, you will be hit it. And, it, it, and the pain will be uh, quite uh, substantial. So my recommendation to you guys is this. If you are currently in a job and that uh, you see the bad economy happening and you're losing your uh, the value of your income, then that should be a great lesson for you not to work in a goddamn job with a fixed salary in the first place and try to think of entrepreneurship. Because in entrepreneurship, you have options. In entrepreneurship, you have the option to, first of all, negotiate the prices. Recently, I was sitting down with a couple of our clients and we had to renegotiate all of our prices because I told them and explained that, sorry, guys, you know that this is inflation. The prices are going up and this way we cannot remain profitable and we have no option but to increase the prices for all of our clients. And this, of course, takes some effort. It's not easy and it doesn't always work very well with all clients. And of course, you have to be very flexible because sometimes the clients really don't have the money. So you have to be actually quite uh, accepting and flexible. But in the end, you have a choice. You can start renegotiating your rates. You can try to work more hours, get more clients at the same rate. Ultimately, you will be able to do something about it because you have the freedom. However, if you're in a job with a fixed salary, the only options you got are saving your shirt by taking risks. And understand this, investing all your money in buying a currency is a risk. Putting all your money in gold, it's a risk because if the bubble bursts and that bubble, that goddamn bubble always bursts, <laughs> And always burst at a time that you not fucking expect it. So at that time, you will actually lose a lot more, which is why I'm not a fan of hoarding uh, foreign currencies or investing in gold very much. That's why I love real estate, because in real estate, it always goes up and it's always manageable. And in good or bad economic conditions, you can always count on it. And uh, however, this is only true if you are not living in your own apartment. So if you own a house and you're living in it, understand this is a basic uh, finance. Your own house is not an asset. So in tough economic conditions, you'll only go down. If you have, let's say, a mortgage pay payment to make, then you will only go down. However, if your property is being used to generate cash flow by renting it out to some other people, in that case, in tough economic conditions, you can actually get a lot done. So ultimately, my recommendation for the people who are working right now is to first try to protect your asset, but be very careful about it. And for those who are unemployed, well, welcome uh, to the new world of entrepreneurship because you have nothing to lose. Start with some idea that can actually generate cash and understand that if you are an entrepreneur, you will have a much better uh, lifestyle than if you want to work for a job or something. And that gives you a great chance to actually start over and make a business. Uh, very true. And I, I want to add to that uh, with respect to people who are uh, employees rather than entrepreneurs and owning their own businesses is that, um, you know, obviously this is a little bit high risk. So you want to do it at a good good condition that you're in, whether economically or personal eco economy. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you can always negotiate your own wage wages as well. Like I, I see a lot of tendency in uh, people uh, who are employed that are scared to re renegotiate their wages merely because they're like, okay, I, I don't want to lose a job. And I understand that if it's uh, if it's a tough time for you and it, you don't want to take risks. But if you are in a good good uh, comfort in your comfort, basically get out of that comfort. Try to look for better wages. And if they're not really willing to uh, to comply with uh, with that request, then be willing to move on to a different job. Uh, at your uh, getting out of your comfort zone, uh, I think th I think that's that's one of the ways that, in my personal belief, uh, uh, I, I de uh, belief system works really well to to not not just to improve, but also creating a stronger and um, uh, backbone for for tough situations as well for for people who are not entrepreneurs, which which I which is there's nothing wrong with it. But then uh, I, I myself uh, love being an entrepreneur, and I encourage you to do that as well. Uh, it's a really, really fun gig. Um, anyhow, so we, we move on. We we mostly focused. We mostly focus on surviving 
although we talked about thriving a little bit as well. But I want to I want to put more focus on thriving now, uh, uh, and that is you know using this situation, this this turmoil, this chaos, uh, if you will, to basically. Uh, as as the book obstacles away would tell us make it an opportunity rather than a problem that than a not a, not a problem it is a problem but then rather than it being a negative make it actually a positive make uh, make profit out of it and thrive off the back of it how would you go about how would you prepare yourself how would you what is your plan to thrive in in bad economic conditions well, first of all, thriving and batting on the conditions is only possible for entrepreneurs. That is, you have to be a player in your field, not merely uh, a wager, somebody who just uh, receives a salary. That's number one. So right. thriving is not possible for those unemployed or for those working at a job. It is only possible for the entrepreneurs who have a say in the game. That's number one. So if you want to thrive, quit your job and become an entrepreneur, run your own business. That's number one. Number two. Ultimately, the reason that thriving is so uh, common among uh, dedicated entrepreneurs in tough times is uh, a multifactorial, of course. There are many factors involved. Number one, in bad economic conditions, people oftentimes are very emotional. Most consumers are emotional, especially if the value of the currency takes a hit. So in that condition, there are a lot more uh, willing to cash because on a psychological level, they do not feel that that money has much value. I remember yesterday I had a seminar and uh, one of our uh, attendants, uh, a great gentleman, he's a great friend of mine. I love him so much. Uh, he's an athlete and also a real estate guy. And uh, in, the, in the middle of uh, the session, he actually took out uh, a bill and cut it in half to demonstrate how the value of a currency can be cut in half. It was actually a very cinematic, uh, great things. We actually enjoyed it so much. But that clearly shows how most people feel. In tough economic times, they feel that their money has less value. And in that condition, they do not value their hard earned cash as much as they do when the economy is good. So if things were very well, of course, uh, this gentleman, uh, David, he's, of course, uh, a very wealthy business person. So for him, just cutting a, a, a cash in half doesn't mean anything for him because he's the guy is super rich. But still, the very fact shows that in that tough economic conditions, most people do not value their cash very much which means their spending is not as hard for them as it is when things are well. And ultimately, if you have good strategies for attracting their attention and offering value, they're a lot more reluctant to actually pay. This is also true if you work in certain industries that tend to be rather glamorous. Think about like luxury things. You see, when things, when the economy is going down, then luxury stuff become a lot more in demand, ironically, because uh, now all of a sudden, it's uh, the, the prices are much better because the value currency is coming down, right? So mm. because of all of these things, uh, the best strategy for thriving uh, in tough economic conditions is to understand first the psychology of consumer, consumers and consumer behavior, how it changes during these times. So in tough economic times, consumers are a lot less likely to spend money on things they do not consider to be important, while simultaneously they're a lot more likely to spend money on things they consider to be out of reach in good economic times, which means, ironically, the best time to sell uh, luxury items or things at a higher price is actually during tough economic times, because during those times, it is when you can offer the highest quality product at the best price possible, because that's when you want to focus on quality. So for all the entrepreneurs out there, if things are tough in the economy, focus on doubling the quality of your product while simultaneously increasing the price so as to keep up with the inflation rate. I mean, you cannot really run a business and in a bad economic condition with high inflation rates and then charge the same price. In this case, you're betraying yourself, you're betraying your company, and you're betraying people who count on you for the income that you bring to home. So ultimately, in those tough conditions, you owe it to yourself, to your family, and to your staff to increase your rate because that's necessary. However, while you're increasing your rates as the inflation goes up, also try to increase the quality of your service. Offer more things, add some stuff to it, make sure the quality is increased and the customer can actually tangibly realize that the quality has been increased and only then they'll be glad to actually pay more. That's the only way you can actually try to thrive in tough economic conditions. That's in terms of generating income via business. Now, in terms of passive income, we already mentioned that's the best part, the best part, because 
in tough economic uh, times when the inflation goes up, it's a lot easier to make money from things such as real estate because the value goes up. And it's also easier to generate income if you are into foreign exchange. That is, if you do Forex, you can make very, very good money in tough times. One of the great examples that we did earlier with Russia was the price of, do- the price of euro was about 73 uh, rubles per euro. And right. uh, not, about four months ago, one of my business partners in Russia told me that we have heard that the price of euro will go all the way up to 80 rubles per euro. That's an increase of more than 10% in less than six or seven months, which is very wow. high, by the way. So yeah. what we did, we heard the news, we bought the euros and stuff, we had invest, uh, invested in the in, in, in euros, and once the price went up, we sold them, and we generated a lot more cash without working. So the second aspect of thriving in bad economic conditions is to not react emotionally. Instead, act strategically, plan in advance, and understand that inflation is not bad. Inflation is great for those who have capital. Inflation is only bad for those who spend all the money that they have. Only these people suffer when things uh, are bad in the economy. If you have no capital, you will suffer tremendously because you're dependent on a single income that is always fixed and cannot be increased. But for those who have capital, then in tough economic times, your job is one thing and one thing only. Try to increase that capital by either investing in real estate or trying to do Forex or even stocks. Uh, They all work. Uh, I prefer a combination of three. I prefer a combination of stocks, foreign exchange, as well as real estate in these tough times, because in these tough times, the stocks can skyrocket very quickly. And so do foreign exchange and, of course, real estate. And that's going to allow you to actually manage your finances and to make good money. And once you but here's the key. You got to know when to get out of the market. You got to know when to cash your dollars or euros. You got to know when to sell your house. The ideal time to sell these things is when before the next cycle. Understand, business is cyclical. Finance is cyclical. So when things are going up, they will not go up all the time. It's impossible. They will not. Uh, we mentioned this earlier. A gentleman contacted me on Instagram, said, Dan, I heard the currency about this one. is going to go really go up crazy. I said, dude, don't worry. It's going to come down. And it did come down. And of course, when it came down, I said, dude, it's going to be awesome. It's going to come down. I said, don't worry. It's going to go up again. So <laughs> know this cyclical pattern and you want to make money from this cycle because that's how the wealthy make money anyways. If there was no ups right. and downs, there would be no income generated from the stock market. The whole Wall Street would collapse. All right? right. So you want to focus on this. And if you do a combination of increasing your sales as well as prices, that's very important. If an entrepreneur does not increase his or her prices in bad economic times, he or she is betraying himself, his company, and his brand. Number two, try to actually uh, generate passive income and make good investments via real estate, stocks, and forex. Amazing, that's very true. And uh, you know, as Warren Buffett would uh, would say, I'm paraphrasing not the exact quote, but uh, whenever everybody's cautious, be greedy. Whenever everybody's greedy, be cautious. Wow, exactly man. that's point. my motto for, for finance. So <laughs> such a great quote. Love it. Yeah, yeah, very true. And uh, with that, we're coming to the uh, end portion of our uh, episode today. So do you have to wrap up, basically, do you have any final comments on the on the matter? That's right. My final comment is about psychology. Guys, understand your finances and your business is a function of your psychology. If you want to get good results in business and in finance, first work on your psychology. Do not react to the market. Most people in the marketplace, they react to bad news and good news, and that's often the worst. So when you react, you are telling the whole world that I have no plan and I cannot handle it. So number one, understand that you get a, uh, you cannot react to bad economic conditions. Act cool. Number two, have plan Bs in case. Have savings aside. That is why I always tell people to, you need to have at least six months worth of your monthly expenditures in savings, not invested, not basically uh, try to put in in a risky venture, literally in the safest way possible, ready for expenditure. You need to have that, you know, uh, safety net. If you don't have it, you will suffer. So right now, focus. If you do not have six months worth of your expenditures already in safe, secure savings, I'm not talking about like growing that income. I'm not talking about trying to raise and make it twice. I am talking about just keeping it there. If it's in your pillow, if it's in your safe, by all means, keep it there. No problem. But keep it there (laughs) to have that 
peace of mind. Why? Because that security that comes with having cash <clears throat> in hand in tough economic times will allow you to think logically and not react emotionally. Because everyone who reacts emotionally will lose in tough economic times. And the only winners are the ones who are acting cool and logical. And trust me, it is almost impossible to act cool and logical if you do not have any savings left for tough times. So you want to have that as well. And finally, understand that you will get from the economy what you want, not what the economy and the conditions in it tell you to, to actually get. So ultimately, focus on raising your standards. 10x your business. Try to 10x your amount of effort that you make in your business. And the fourth and final element is about your finances. Try to thrive by keeping the value of your money and more importantly, trying to invest it and uh, try to uh, increase its value over time by uh, having this long, exhaustive and focused plan of action in all the aforementioned areas that I've just mentioned. Amazing, amazing. We had a very, very great uh, episode here filled with uh, information. And with that, we're coming to the end. Thank you, Dan, for being here with us again. It is my pleasure, buddy. And thank you for tuning in once more. And until later, I am Puya LJ, a.k.a. Pujix. Have a good one.